Hello, my beautiful computer science students. Welcome to another AP CSA lesson where I, Goldie, take you through Unit 2 using objects. Today's lesson is Lesson 7, where we're going to talk about wrapper classes, um, specifically wrapper classes for integer and for double. So let's get into it. Okay. So first off, what is a wrapper? Um, well, a wrapper class uh, wraps a primitive data type like an int or a double into basically a reference data type. So it's a way to um, work with primitive data types like if you want to use an integer or you want to use a decimal but make them into objects. Um, the reference data type is a similarly named primitive data type. Um, the only difference is that it's capitalized. There's reasons why this is useful in a program, and we're actually going to encounter some later in the unit, especially when we start dealing with array lists. Um, but for now, I want to introduce them because we've been talking about objects and just show you what they are. Um, but the reason why we use them and in what situations would we want to use them, that's going to come up a little bit later. Um, so there's one for each primitive data type. Um, we're just going to focus on the two for int and then double. So the class integer with a capital I is the reference data type for ints, and double with a capital D is the reference data type for doubles. All of these are found in the java.link package, which remember is automatically imported in a Java program. So you don't have to have a special import statement. You can just start using um, and constructing these objects and using the methods. So um, integer has quite a few methods that go along with it. We're going to focus on these four. Um, you have to know what they do um, and how they're used, but they are part of the Java Quick Reference. So that formula sheet you're given on the AP exam, um, you do get these lines of code and an explanation of what it does on there. But you're going to want to know, know what's going on there. So the first one, the first piece of code, um, it constructs a new integer object that represents whatever int value you want. So we've been constructing objects for a while now in unit two. So you recognize that example. Um, this is constructing an integer object. So it starts off with integer minum equals new integer five. So you're creating a new integer object with a value of five. You're using that integer constructor. Um, the integer dot min value is a constant that is the minimum value that can be represented by an int. Okay, so we talked about how in an integer and in a primitive data type, there's a lower limit and an upper limit to what values an int can hold. This is a constant when you use it in your code that's going to basically fill in the lowest value possible. Okay? And here are two examples of how you can use it. You can use it with an object, an integer object, or with an int primitive data type. Okay? Now, we haven't talked a lot about constants yet um, in this course. Again, that's something we get to bring up later. I know I say that a lot, but that's what happening is we're going to bring up constants a little bit later. Um, so here's your first glimpse into what a constant is. Okay, So we have integer min 1 equals, and then you set it equal to you know a value. You assign it a value, and that value is that constant. And you can do the same thing with the primitive data type, int min 2 equals, and instead of just having like you know the value negative 1,000, you can actually put an integer dot min value, and it's the lowest possible integer that um, an int value can hold. And it's the same thing with max value. Okay? Same syntax, you just use max value. Okay? And you have to use that integer dot and then capital max underscore capital value, all of that, to specifically call on that integer. Okay? And then the last one is actually a method that returns the value of the integer as an int. So this would be like if you have an int object and you want to use that value but use it as a primi primitive data type, you would use the minum, because remember minum up here was constructed as um, an integer object, and then you use that as your reference call, minum, int value, that's the method in the object creating class that you would call, and that returns your, um, your value of minum as an integer, so you'll have an integer value to capture it. 
So those are the four you have to know for the AP exam, but again, they're all on that formula sheet. For double, there's only two you got to know for double, and that's the constructor and the method that returns um, the value as a double. So here's the constructor for the double object. Again, you can see it kind of looks just like the integer object, just like any other object we would create in Java. It just has double. And then the double value works the same as int value that we just saw, where you take, um, if you construct an object called myNum, you use that same object reference, you call on that method, and it returns a value, the 4.5, and stores it in a primitive data type. Okay. Now there are double min values and double max values. Those get a little tricky though because of the way Java stores, um, uh, stores decimals, so you don't have to know those for the AP exam. They do exist, but you would rarely have to use them um, for us in this course. So they just focus on these two for the doubles. Okay. All right. So how does this kind of relate to what we've already what we've already learned? So when I said integer minum equals new integer five, right? That is creating an integer object. It's essentially the same as the primitive object, the primitive type, right? Int minum equals five, okay? So one's just an object and one is a primitive data type. Same thing with the double. Double dubs equals new double 4.5 is essentially the same as saying double dubs equals 4.5, okay? One's just an object and one is primitive. And like I said, there's situations where we would want to use one or the other, especially when dealing with array lists and arrays um, that are going to come up later in this course. For right now, just see the similarities between them um, and just know how to use those uh, methods from the Java Quick Reference. Okay. The last thing we're going to talk about in this lesson is autoboxing and unboxing. Okay. So autoboxing is an automatic conversion that Java will apply between primitive types and their object wrapper classes. Okay. So this, can, um, this means that it can automatically convert an int primitive into an integer um, object. And then same thing for a double, and double primitive into a double object. Um, they apply autoboxing um, in two situations that we'll see. When you pass, when it's passed as a parameter that expects an object. So if you pass an integer value like four as a primitive, but a method expects an object, it'll apply auto boxing and wrap it up into a nice object box. Uh, and also when you assign a variable to, um, to an object, when you assign some sort of primitive to an object, it will um, wrap that as well. Okay. So here's um, here's two examples of that. So this is auto boxing here where you're assigned to a variable of a wrapper. So integer a equals 10. So instead of using the new constructor okay, and say new integer 10, um, it's taking that 10 and setting it equal to that integer object. Java will auto box here. Okay. Now it can't do that for any object, right? Like when we made dog earlier in the in the unit, uh, there's no auto boxing that happens with dog or any user created object. This auto boxing is specific to the wrapper classes. Okay, so this is an one example of auto boxing. Here's another example of auto boxing. If you do a dot compare to negative seven, okay. So a is an object. The compare to we've talked about with strings. Um, because a string is technically um, a reference data type. The compare to, you can also compare to um, uh, two integer objects. Okay? There's a dot compare to between two integer objects in the integer class. Now you don't have to know it for the AP exam, so I haven't talked about it yet, but here's an example. A is an object, negative seven, that is a, a primitive data type. So you're comparing an object to a primitive, um, but it will promote the primitive into an integer object so that you're comparing those two objects. And then it'll print off a positive number since 10 is larger than negative seven, um, and it works just fine. Even though you're trying to compare a primitive versus an object, Java will do the auto boxing uh, and promote it, essentially. Unboxing is going the opposite way, where it takes an object 
and it converts it down to a primitive, or it takes a wrapper class and converts it to a primitive. Um, so integer to an int and double to a double. Um, it applies unboxing when it's, again, passes a parameter, but it, it expects a primitive data type, or you assign to a variable of a primitive type. So basically what we just saw, but opposite. Okay, so here's some examples. Um, so you're creating, <coughs> excuse me, a new integer object. Um, but then when you try to assign an object to a primitive, it'll unbox the integer object. So what value gets stored in K? 18 is the value that gets stored in K. It'll automatically unbox it and put that 18 value into K. So it'll take that object and put it into um into that variable k. Okay. Now obj, that object, doesn't go away. It doesn't unbox it and leave it unboxed. It just unboxes the 18 and puts it in the value of k. obj still exists. Um, it's still an object. Um, it just unboxes the 18 to put it into k. Okay. Um, and then the other example of being passed as a parameter. So think back to our dog class. Let's say I have an integer age, an age object, that's 7. And my dog from lesson one, dog puppers equals new dog, it accepted a string and an integer, okay, an int. A string and an int is what that constructor accepted. But I take this integer and I pass it there. But my constructor is expecting an int, okay. If my constructor is expecting an int and I pass in an integer, Java will unbox it. So again, it'll take that object, it'll unbox that seven, and it'll put it in place of that constructor, that seven, so that you're actually passing it a primitive type. Okay. So it unboxes that integer object since the constructor is expecting that primitive int. So that goes back to an example from lesson one that we've done. Okay. All right. That brings us to the end of lesson seven, wrapper classes. Again, this lesson was just to introduce you to them um, and show you some examples of them being used so that if you recognize them in, in your code, you know kind of how to trace through them and understand them. Uh, we'll be working a lot more with them when it comes to arrays and array lists later on. So thank you so much for watching and following along, and I hope you have a wonderful day.